I just made the best working Lego slot machine. And before I show it off, we need to go back a couple weeks so that way you understand what this machine really does. From the start, I knew I wanted my slot machine to be fun, fast, and smart. So, beginning off, we had a look at the coins. If we use a traditional mechanism with just a tile trying to push the coins, it would be pushing two and would jam because the coins are too thin. So instead, we're going to use the studs on a plate. So if I hold this top one down, the studs can just push that bottom one. So now we can dispense the coins one at a time. Now we need to add a motor onto that and make a place for a column of coins to be. So this can now push it and has that front bar to stop them. And after making that column a little taller, we can now add that motor onto there. So let's test it. And it's actually really fast. Stage one complete. If we add on a ramp so the coins go down it and into the column, we can see that the coins would go in the column. And then once it's full, they would pass that up and that would go to the profit. If we put this onto a pivoting frame, then the motor, every time it goes back, it would be able to shake that hopper. So that way the coins always land flat. So every time it dispenses, and it can even do it every time you insert a coin. So here if we insert the coin and one doesn't lay flat, we can use that motor to tap it flat. Adding a color sensor and a simple diameter sorting coin sorter allows the machine to detect only quarters. The quarters go to the stack and then once the stack is full, they go here to the owner's profit. Coins like a nickel, a penny, or a dime are all rejected and would go back to the player. With our coin mechanism now working, let's implement that into the machine. So let's build up some walls and then we can set that on top of there. And now let's build up those walls even more so that way we can begin our real randomization mechanisms. Now that we have these walls up, we're going to build five of these randomizers. So as you can see, when this is forwards and we add power here, this ratcheting system spins this gear and then this can continue to spin and this will be directly connected to the wheel. So that randomizes it. And when it's in the center, it's in neutral. So that would be like holding the wheel. And then if we go down here, this is directly connected now. So we could use this to nudge the wheels one color. After a quick order of Lego Technic pieces, I was able to begin building. And my goodness, did this take a while to get all of those gears, axles, and pins all set into place. But eventually everything started working. And then I added this small motor so that way it can flip all of these clutches back to their forwards position. But it wasn't that powerful. So we changed that gear ratio out to a 1 to 9 gear ratio. And with all that torque, it's able to flip them right back. On each one of these, we're using a clutch system. So this moves that clutch into a different gear. Here it's on that gear. Over there it's on that gear. And over here, it's in neither gear. This is the same mechanism that LEGO sets use in their cars. We're using the same piece and clutches here, where this would be forwards, this is neutral, and that's reverse. But instead, this is the ratchet, this is neutral, or hold, and that's direct drive, to where it would be able to nudge the wheel an exact amount. With that now done, let's make the wheels. With LEGO, there's lots of ways to make a wheel, including wrapping treads around a wheel, or there's actually an even better way. If we turn the treads inside out and then just connect them there, we now have a wheel. And I included these pieces so that way we can attach studs and bricks there. So after doing that, it looks like this and we have a wheel with different colors. But there's a slight issue here. This wheel is so heavy because it has so much rotational inertia as all the weight is on the outside. It's not distributed towards the center at all. So to get the wheel going, it takes a whole lot of force. To counter that, I use this. So when you spin the axle, it's pulling on the rubber bands. So if we spin it slowly, it'll just spin. But if we try to spin it fast real quick, it'll pull on the rubber bands and then get the wheel going, which makes it easier on the axle. Like so, and then it can free spin. After connecting together all five wheels, I then attach a chain to each one. And here we can see that rubber band mechanism working. Like that. And that made it much easier for me to get it up to that speed. After a whole lot of building, now we have our bottom section with the five switches connected to our top section with our five wheels. And that's done by the chains for each one. So if we power this motor with all five of our switches in the upward position, it'll spin all five of them like so. 
And then, once I release this button, they're slowly stop spinning. And that randomizes them because they stop in a different order. So now, let's add the sensor up top that can detect what color the wheel is on. Using a setup like this, we can attach it through there. We can attach this gear over here. So now when we spin this, on the back side here, we have a sensor that is detecting what color it's on here. And then we'll add two gears there, that way the motor is directly connected to it. If we set them all to green, the sensor would see that, and it would know that they're all showing blue. Let's move this section into the actual machine. But before we do that, we need to add the arm. So the arm will be held by rubber bands, and then when you pull it down, it'll hit a touch sensor. Finally, it's time to complete the machine. So let's mount this on top of the machine, and then get all the walls and panels built up around it. And while I was building up those walls, I realized I left out the main drive motor. I took it off, and now we need to re-add it on. And we might as well test it while we're at it. And look at that, they spin. After that test, I moved on to the front panel. And wow did this take a while to finally design correctly. It looked pretty bad at some points, but we'll skip all those parts. Then I realized I missed a crucial step. While inserting a coin, I realized that I messed up and never put a ramp to get to the coin mechanism. This meant that any coin inserted was just thrown randomly in there. So after adding a ramp and then this glass wall there to contain them, it worked. And then I finished the front of the machine, added on the activating arm to the side of the machine, and then the tops of the switches. And finally, some creative lettering on top, and now we're ready to program. And only if I knew what I was getting myself into when I started this project. But eventually, I got the program working for the coin mechanism, so let's take a look at that. Right now, you can insert a coin, it'll detect it, and shake the hopper a little bit, so that way the coins lay flat. And then, it can also dispense the coins. And then after that was the real monster of the program, all the logic programming and sensing of the reels to tell you how much you won. And wow is this machine smart. But I'll spare you the boredom there, I got it all done, so now we can finally take a look at this amazing machine. Upon starting the program, it says credit zero with a red light because we can't play, and all of these are locked. So let's insert a coin here, and that's now green and we have credits as one. So, let's give it a spin. So let's give spin all five of our reels here. And let's see what we land on. That's a pretty good spin. We got a whole lot of blues. So, we're gonna hold all those blues. And we're gonna keep this one on spin. And then we're gonna select hold here. And it's gonna flash red and display we have no credits. So let's insert another coin so we can spin again here. Now it's green with one credit. We can give it a spin. And it'll spin just that wheel. And not quite. So we got four matching ones, which indicates that we got five coins. So right now it's sensing, and then after that, it's gonna dispense our coins. And here's our five coins. Pennies, nickels, and dimes are all rejected since they aren't wide enough to stay on those two rails. But we can use the coins that we just won to add credits. And we can add multiple credits at a time and it'll keep track down there. So let's give it a spin. So I didn't win. And if I don't feel confident enough that I could re-spin those by holding them and by inserting another coin, I can hit that bottom button to cash out what I spun. In this case was a loss. So let's play again. And here we have two greens, so I want to hold those two greens because I want to nudge these from red to green. So we're going to hold that as one as well because it doesn't matter if that one's blue. And we're going to flip these both all the way down to nudge. And doing that, you don't need another credit as you're not actually spinning the wheels fully. So now we're going to select the right button here, nudge. And it's going to change those to green. Now it says sensing because it's detecting what we got. And that should be another five coins. There we go. So let's play one last time and hope for a jackpot as we look behind the scenes as well. This motor spins all five of the reels. And then they slow down and stop independently due to their independent ratchets. 
so that means once that motor stops, they can continue to spin, so they slow down on their own. So, with three blues, we'll get to hold those. After the machine unlocks those switches, then you can flip them, and by flipping those three, it's going to keep those ones basically in neutral, while the other two stay in gear, so they're spin. And we got it! The machine looks at the tops of the wheels because it knows if that's at the top, then this must be on the side. And by looking at each wheel like this and moving the color sensor, it's able to detect that we got the jackpot. So now it's going to vend us 15 coins because we got the jackpot. And that's 15 coins. And that's going to do it for us. And I would definitely say that machine was a lot of fun. And if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you all to subscribe. It is always free. And that way you get the notifications when I upload more amazing machines like this one.